So performance appraisals are one of the trickiest um, human resource management practices. From the organization's perspective, it's an important management and control mechanism, right? Organizations need to know who's doing well, who's not doing well. It's part of their talent management process, it's part of their performance management process, it's part of making sure that everyone's doing what the organization needs done to be successful. So it serves an important goal for the organization. For the employees, it also serves an important role. People want to know where they stand. It's an important feedback mechanism so people know what they're doing well, what they're not doing well, um, where they can improve. All good so far. <laughs> the problem is, from the employee's perspective, it's also used to make employment decisions, raises, promotions, terminations in some cases. So there's kind of mixed motives from the employee's perspective to on the one hand present as positive an image as possible to make sure they get as good as an evaluation as possible to get the best possible raises and ratings that they can. But that presenting the best possible image of themselves is at odds with their want and need to present an accurate picture so they can get feedback on what they're doing well and what they're not doing well. Same thing from the organization standpoint, right? Managers hate filling out performance appraisals. They hate confronting and having to defend the ratings that they give their employees because they know the employees are going to be defensive. So there's a lot of potential conflicts in what both the employee and the organization are trying to achieve. And companies have tried hundreds of different iterations and, and well, what if we rated these, you know, behaviors instead of traits? What if we used a goal-based system? What if we evaluate people quarterly instead of annually? Uh, what if we don't use numbers? Um, companies are trying all kinds of things to try and solve the, the challenges and nobody's got the right answer. We know that if you give employees regular ongoing feedback, then that becomes less of a part of that annual or quarterly or, or biannual meeting because you're not saving up all the negative things on this employee so you can unload them all at once. Um, if you give people regular feedback, then there's no surprises at that sit-down talk, and you can really focus on coaching rather than being kind of judge and jury when you have that, that discussion. So that's one thing that's been found to be helpful. Um, what's evaluated and, and how those evaluations are done have also been shown to matter, right? So, um, some companies, to make sure managers aren't giving everybody fives so they can you know, just be the good guy and not have any uncomfortable conversations, force companies to um, rank order or sort employees into certain categories. That solves the problem of not every, everybody not getting fives, but it creates other problems, especially if you've got a pretty good workforce and people really are all above average. And frankly, if you're managing them right, if you've hired the right people, if you've trained them well, they all should be above average. So if putting people in categories that doesn't, doesn't really fit doesn't work well either. And it also creates a competition among employees that can be very dysfunctional and counter to the, the uh, culture the organization's trying to uh, create. Uh, when companies have those kinds of rack and stack systems, we know people don't share as much information, aren't as collaborative, and those might be the very things the organization wants to reinforce. Goal setting as part of a performance management system is done um, cooperatively. So you ask the, ideally you ask the employee to initially think about what would be appropriate goals. The manager comes into that meeting with some idea of what appropriate goals are and you come to consensus on what is a reasonable but challenging goal. There's no question goal setting is very effective but has some caveats, right? A goal is not going to be effective if it's impossible. A goal is not going to be effective if people don't have the knowledge, skills, abilities to deliver on those goals or if there are um, barriers that keep them completely outside their control that make it impossible for them to achieve their goals. If people aren't committed to their goals, they're not going to be effective. So you want to use goals, but you want to set goals that are achievable that employees are going to buy into. Um, again, back to this notion of um, alignment. Uh, you want to identify goals that help align the interests of the employee with the interests of the organization. So I would focus on behaviors because people have more control over behaviors than they do their traits or other factors. 
Uh, I would focus on things that are measurable. I would focus on things that are within the person's control. There's nothing more frustrating than be held accountable to things that you can't control. Um, and then the other recommendation would be to be really clear about what's most important to the organization and make sure that the, what you're holding, because people are going to do what you measure and, and what they're evaluated on. So back to this notion of alignment, you want to make sure that what you're, the, the criteria that you're using, the standards that you're using, are consistent with what's, what's most critical to that organization.